Okay, I so you wrote the role and then didn't know if you were going to audition for it. Yes, uh, yes. I mean, we we knew going into season two because I wrote on season one as well. We knew going into season two that there was going to be like like Pete has a comedy girlfriend, and that was like discussed. And I was like, oh, like maybe I can act in the show. And then it became very clear that I was not in the running at all. Um, Why was that? I don't, I think it was like a combination of things. I think it was also like how Judd sees this character, how, um, like maybe how the character also just evolved in its writing over the season and like who she became. And then, and I remember like discuss, like I think Pete told me, he was like, yeah, I don't think you can audition for it. I was like, okay. And then, and then it was really interesting because when you're writing on something, you're, you're, you almost do feel detached from that side of things because you're just trying to get a script together. Yeah. So it's easy to be like, okay, I'm not acting in this. Like I didn't act in Ted Lasso and I was like, that's okay. Like that's a different part of the show. Like I'm, it's fine. Um, but I did feel like very connected to what we were trying to say with her. But then when you're told you're like not right for something, you kind of put it out of your mind. Cause you're like, what's what, what, why I can't fight this fight. Um, but then last, last, last minute, after so many people I knew had gone in for the role, I was at Largo in LA and I was, I think it was like a Pete Holmes and Friends show and I was just doing stand up on it. And Pete was like backstage, like, uh, I were actually, we're going to have you audition. And I was like, oh, okay. And because I was told I wasn't right for it, I think it gave me the confidence to really not care how it went. Damn, yeah. It was the perfect mindset. God, not caring is always what gets it's people huge. the job. It's huge. How do I not care? I mean, I cared in that, to be clear. Still <laughs> prepped super hard. <laughs> yeah. act, two acting coaches. Ran it with my friend. All this stuff. Like, still, like, had all of that. But when I went into the room, there was a little bit of, like, I don't know. Yeah, I think it was just I wasn't afraid. I also knew everyone in the room. Right. You know, to walk into an audition room and it's like, oh, hey, guys, like I saw you 10 minutes ago. Like it's right, just a right. very different. Yeah. And then also I know that Pete loves to improvise. Judd Apatow loves to improvise. So there was not a pressure to stick to a script. It was like, no, I just know he just wants to see if like we can vibe out this relationship between Allie and Pete. Yeah. And so I think that also took the pressure off. Right. And then left the room. Judah, the showrunner, called me and was like, that was really good. And I was like, thanks. Like, I, kinda, I was You're like, like uh -huh. it was really good. <laughs> and then just didn't hear anything. And I was like, OK, what's going on? And then Pete wanted to go to dinner. And I was like, I called my manager. I was like, why does Pete want to go to dinner? Like, if I'm not getting it, can you just tell me? I was like, that's so weird. I was so weirded out like by it's that. It's the worst letdown. Like, yes. Yeah. I was like, you don't need to like break up with me. Like, we don't need to do that. Like, right. we can, we're, we work together. I've known you a long time. Like, we don't need to do that. And then I found out my manager texted me. He goes, I think you're really going to like that dinner. And I like literally dropped my phone and was like, wait, what? So to go from you aren't right for this, you can't even try to you got it was like, to this day, I think about, I go, wait, what? How did that happen? Like, I can't, I wish I could go back and tell myself, like, this is going to get real good. Like, you just wait. <laughs> like, this is going to play out in the funniest way possible. <laughs> that you're actually going to end up getting this when you're told you're, you can't even try. Why do you think that happened? Why do you think I, they, what, what part? Like, you feel, like, why do you think you were given the opportunity oh, to audition? I don't know. Something I guess they were seeing a lot of people and they were like not finding. I, I mean, like you understand that role more than like you're a fucking stand up yeah. comedian. The thing is, I like, also know how to bust Pete's balls. And I think you yeah. really need you need a little not that other people weren't able to do that. But I I've known him so long. I was like, I know exactly how he likes to be taken down. Right. Like I know exactly like what he finds funny in yeah. being roasted. I was like, this is like this. The roast culture of just like. Of, of doing it out of love is yes. just something that I feel that like people try to participate in that are fans of stand-up comedy and they wind up just offending me greatly and I'm just like 
I hate you and you're ruining my life. Right, like people right, in the right. comments just like saying things and they think they're being funny. And I'm like, you're making no, me No, you're like, that makes miserable. me insecure. Stop, stop, yeah, stop, yeah, stop, stop, stop. We don't have that bond. Yeah, yeah exactly. Totally. It's all context. It's exactly. Like, if there's a love there, you're like, you're pretty safe. But like yeah if you haven't built that trust you're like you don't just get to like insult me freely like yeah. you have to know each other like take me to dinner first you yeah, know what exactly. I mean <laughs> exactly that is so awesome would you say that that was what was would you say that was like the moment in your career that felt like the most exciting like what was the absolute m- like yeah hands down yes because the blind sighting. Right. It's the misdirection. I, it's, it is. I've never been more misdirected in my life. Yeah. And I mean, I have, have such like strong visuals of that day because I had to go to Philadelphia that weekend to do stand up. So I remember like having my little suitcase with me and like leaving the writer's room in Greenpoint and like going to the station and just like being in Philadelphia that weekend. Like Philly has a really strong like tie to that experience for me. And yeah it was just I mean yeah it really was this I mean just months of watching other people audition for it and really getting to a point where genuinely I was just giving them advice on what I thought like they would text me like hey I'm going in for this and I was like oh here's what I know it's good karma I I was just like because it's just not mine yeah but it is it is kind of that like like sort of um buddhist you know like you don't own anything like nothing is really yours mm. and i feel like not that i was thinking that at the time like, right please i'm not like yeah i'm yeah. not that astute but i think that when i look back i'm like wow if you really let something go really truly there is a chance it comes back mm. okay i gotta take that in i think i also do i feel like i kind of just discovered it just now i like that because it is the most i've ever just submitted to what was in my life i gotta let some things go that i want okay. <laughs> that, that's in that i'm not letting it go in that sentence it's not really giving up it's yeah. just like taking control of what you can control right which i think has been a big lesson that i've been trying to teach myself is like it's okay like like just really work within the parameters you're given it doesn't mean that you're not going to push the envelope and try to expand those parameters right but like you can do so much if it's like, okay, well, that door's closed, but what about this door over here that's completely open? Right. I feel like that is kind of how you navigate it a little bit. And then that other door that was closed before ends up opening anyway. So you're like, yeah, I think that, I don't know. What's your advice for not harping on rejection? Oh, boy. I think it's like really letting yourself have a day, have a week. Again, like just allowing because I think sometimes there's a culture of like, ah, fuck them. Like, you didn't need it anyway. And you're like, okay. I wanted it. Yeah, you're like, <laughs> yeah. But I didn't know that I needed it, but I really wanted it. And I think that kind of having that, like, well, fuck them, th- whatever. I think that is a version of, again, going back to the thing we were saying at the beginning of like not acknowledging, it makes it so much worse. Like, I think you have to really just be like, Oh, that's a real, that's a true bummer. And then you kind of do just get over it because you're, because you have so many other things going on. Do you ever just, like, I feel like sometimes I'll get a rejection. I'll be like, wow, I wasn't good enough. And that'll just like fuck my confidence for like a while. And sometimes I'm like, I, I, and everyone's like, it could be this. It could be random. It could be that. Or like, right. But for some reason, it's just like, I think the rejection of this business feels so personal sometimes when I know that it's not like it's no one's thinking like I decided to reject Natalie Cuomo because she sucks they were just like we picked this person yeah and like not a bunch of these other people and you are included in one of them and for some reason I find that rejection to be something that like is difficult for me oh yeah I mean I'm sure yeah no no I'm not saying that to minimize it I just it's like hard agree of course of course of absolutely of course couple things I would say is one and I'm I mean it's so funny like giving advice when I'm like also living it but one is you've done there are so many things you've done that other people have not done and you always have to remember that it's like okay yeah you didn't get that but like did they get this no do they have the following you have no do they you know do they have like rabid fans who are like psyched for your next move no you know what I mean there's that there's that piece 
And then there's also the other piece of like, I think it does come back to control where it's like, because I mean, okay, let's talk about like auditioning, which is what I assume you're sort of talking about. Yeah, yeah. I feel like, you know, you are going to be told no so many times even once you've booked something it's still no 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 for for a while like it it that is sort of like the gig economy of acting however it is that thing where you're like right but you're smart and funny and you could write something for yourself and even if like you're not the most famous person that's going to get it greenlit which you do have a great following so this doesn't really apply to you but if that's not you then you would cast other people who are who are quote unquote bigger in the eyes of like the studio or whatever. And then you, they just, they rise you up and then you all rise up together. So there really are like workarounds. And I think that knowing it's not that they're easy workarounds, but they are workarounds. If you can like be patient enough to do them. Okay. I really believe that because like, I hope I'm not being too rambly. I had coffee and so I'm sorry. No, no, no. You're yap fest over here. Um, but like I really wanted to act on Ted Lasso like that was like oh I'll get on Ted Lasso and like Bill knows me as an actor like I'll I'll act on Ted Lasso and one of our writers did act on Ted Lasso um but they were like well you're not British and I was like okay but I could do a British accent and they were like yeah Apple doesn't want someone inauthentic to be on the show and I was like okay like parameter given that's I cannot change that I can't change I can't do it but I was given a parameter last time and then I wrote a character who was going to be American I literally wrote her and a version of her did make it in I didn't get it a British person ended up getting it and the character actually was quite small and then didn't that was kind of it it kind of went away in a way um, so like a cool opportunity for that actor, but it wasn't this like it wasn't Ally and crashing. It wasn't right. like a main player. Right. But I really tried. And I even like sent my tape to Jason, which was really hard to do. That is like I mean, that is like such a emotional nakedness to be like, hey boss, like here's my audition. You know, it's <laughs> yeah. like that's a its own personal hell, yeah. you know? But then he wrote me a really nice note just being like, It's not you, but like you're great and he wrote this like really and it didn't feel like bullshit he wasn't being like hey buddy like buck up you'll get them next time it wasn't that energy it was like peer to peer him just being like i want you to know you are good you are not it for this but you are good that's nice and like i believe that i was like why not believe him because i when i heard i was like oh okay yeah sure oh i'm so good then why didn't you book me you know right but then you're like wait what if it was just true? Like, yeah. what if you just allowed that to be true? And then, and, and then when that happened, Bill Lawrence was like, well, why don't we just like try to make a show for you? And I was like, oh, and again, it hasn't gone to air. We don't know what's going to happen. We have no idea. Early, early, early stages. But I was like, oh, well, that's a workaround. Like, doesn't mean it's going to happen, but like, I'm trying and like we'll see what happens and it could be really great like what if that's like great and then I get to like be the star of that thing I was like it just feels like stuff is possible even when it seems like it's impossible like I really really believe that and I'm not a spiritual person I don't work on myself nearly enough like (laughs) I just that is something I believe I'm like I refuse to be told no like whatever it is I was like I won't be told no I love that I think that is like my favorite thing that 